What is up, everybody? We are back again. Super excited to be back. Super excited to be streaming with some amazing guests from Sky. And well, I say Sky, but they cover lots of different companies. But don't worry, we'll be going into that. Today, we have a jam packed session covering. We've got some Taylor Swift conversation going in there. We've got some forecasting conversation going in there. And we've got some cost allocation, efficiency, lots of sports references, lots of fun. Uh, but before we start, Dave and Chris, how are you guys doing today? All right, very good, thank you. Very good. All good. Looking forward to the uh, the long weekend as we have in the UK. So yes, super fun, nice Easter weekend for us. Um, I'm excited to talk to you guys because you guys are one of the Optics customers. I'm wearing my Optics. Uh, it's too small. Uh, it says Media and Entertainment and Telco. As people probably remember, I cover Telco, but these guys are in our Media Entertainment customers. And I was even with some people from Sky yesterday having a great talk, sharing some stuff about optimization. So it's good we can keep this kind of Sky conversation running. So we're going to go into a few different things, like I said today, about efficiency and forecasting. But as always, please feel free to put your questions, comments in the chat if you are watching us live or if you're watching us on YouTube or listening on Spotify, don't forget to like and subscribe and all that fun stuff. And as as we're starting to do more of this, we also have our socials. So you can always check out all of our shorts and funny videos on Keys to AWS Opt on there. But let's let's get into it. So welcome everyone to the Keys to AWS Optimization, the show where we can share stories, concepts, and solutions to help you unlock your spend at AWS. My name is Steph Gooch, and I am your humble FinOps expert here to help you with all your optimization questions. And we have Dave and Chris. So why don't you guys do your one minute origin story? Um, Dave, why don't you kick us off with that? Yeah, so um, so I've been with Sky now about two and a half years, nearly three years, um, and I've, I'm an SRE manager, so working in the engineering team, and um, I when I joined, they said, oh, we've got this thing for you and to manage, and I was like, okay, great, what is it? And they said, uh, FinOps, and I was like, what's that? So so that's where the, the origin really started. Um, Chris had been looking into uh, cloud finance and, and optimization um, longer than than I joined, and we started to build a team from there. Cool, yeah. Um, so yeah, as Dave says, I I was around a little bit longer, um, fifteen years at Sky, in fact, uh, wow. in, a, in a variety of roles, uh, none of which were on camera or anything like that. Unfortunately, <laughs> no. uh, Jeff Stelling's job was always safe on Soccer Saturday. Uh, but for me, um, about far, four or five years ago was when I guess I was first introduced to uh, what we were calling sort of cloud efficiency or cloud finance. Um, and then, yeah, as Dave says, you know, that then he, he came along about two or three years ago and we built up a team. I think we've got now around about a team of about 10 or 11 of us in total, which um, which is great. You know, that we're, we're able to do a lot that... Uh, back in 2019, I could only dream of. Yeah, it had leverage so many people, that's great. Wow. And, and um, we, we're, we're from a part of Sky called uh, Global Streaming. And um, our job is we provide the applications for uh, Now TV, and the, that you would have heard of in the UK. In the in the US, we, we provide Peacock, um, Showtime in uh, Europe, and we've launched in Africa this year um in in partnership with um with another company with an app called show max so um so yeah so we're 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 slowly going global and as you as you can imagine the uh the headaches of managing those costs globally is um is growing so yeah. um so yeah that's that's what we're we're in charge of yeah Sort of. Yeah. <laughs> that, I mean, just like so many different areas you guys cover is so cool, which brings us on to our weekly fun question, which is what is the best thing you have seen on streaming right now? So uh, there's uh, so many things coming out all the time, but what have you guys seen or know that's coming out? There was mention of something coming out tomorrow, mm -hmm. if you want to share that. Yeah. So, um, so on Now TV tomorrow, um, fans of Margot Robbie will be happy to know. Barbie will be streaming from tomorrow, so that's that's good. Actually, one of my my secret guilty pleasures has been my, one of my favourite films this, this year. <laughs> it's um, a guilty pleasure. It's a good film. We we had it on. We had a a Knuff mention last. Or was it last week? The week before when I put on my cowboy hat to reference Barbie. So very friendly Barbie house. In this. Yeah, no, I I really enjoyed it. Um, and um, and also uh, anything anything 
where it's competition. So sport for me. So uh, this weekend, lots of football um, and and a fair bit of rugby as well. So that's nice, what. Nice. Chris, what about you? Have you seen anything good recently? Yeah, I I mean, I watch all sorts. Um, but I think for me, uh, one of the things about Sky has been over the last few years is, is seeing the amount of um, content that's been generated in-house um, mm -hmm. through to uh, content that's been acquired. Um, there's been some, you know, fantastic comedies and, and being uh, so part of global streaming now, we are allied with, you know, part of the Comcast group that obviously opens other doors as well. Um, all of that said, um, you can't beat a bit of Larry David and the last series of Curb Your Enthusiasm is, is currently on and a um, bit worried about how much I identify with Larry sometimes, but it's a great show. <laughs> great. And chat, please let us know what's the best thing you've seen on streaming and we'll highlight some of that. And to highlight some things in the chat already, um, we've got uh, Kose is in the house. Hey, Kose, nice to be back. Uh, and go to m &E team, loving the shout outs. Yeah, come guys, share, share things that you have been seeing recently. Uh, I need some inspiration. I need some more shows to watch. So uh, uh, let me know about that. Okay, so let's get into, da, da, da. let's get into some uh, fin up stories. So we're gonna break the episode down into two sections today. What we're going to talk about first is forecasting challenges and how to over overcome those, how to do it, what tools you can utilize and the experience of these two experts and how they managed to do it with a kind of thing that we spoke about the other day, which was the fact that Taylor Swift obviously appeared, we're a big fan, Swift is on this show, uh, appeared on many NFL games, which caused a spike in the number of people watching. And so these guys had to think about that. They had to consider this and see what would this do to their resources, to their spend and how it would affect it. So let's kick off guys with um, a little bit of background when you were telling me the story, why not share it with the people watching? Sure. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, let's, let's get straight to the point. Um, I mean, with, you know, uh, I, I mean, Steph, I know you're, uh, you're a, a massive NFL expert, so I won't, uh, I won't, I won't sort of go into the, uh, you know, the, the ins and outs of it, but I know maybe some of our viewers aren't. So just to explain a little bit, um, let's, let's rewind a little bit and talk about this, this game. So this specific game was a, a wild card game. It basically, it's in the NFL postseason where the sort of the best teams are playing off ultimately to reach the Super Bowl. Uh, where obviously the the you know somebody is crowned winner and uh, they get the Super Bowl rings and all that cool stuff. So the wild card is, is like I say is one of those um, uh, close season games, um, and we don't know being a sporting event. Uh, we don't know who's playing, um, but uh, until very very close to the time. What we did know um, as of sometime last year, early um, sort of mid middle of twenty three, we knew that um, uh, we had acquired the rights to stream that game exclusively on Peacock. So wow. um, again, just sort of name checking as Dave mentioned, one of the apps that we support, we knew that this was coming and we knew that this was gonna be a massive deal. Didn't realize actually in the end how, how massive a deal it would turn out to be. But from, from our point of view, this was something that as a streaming platform, we hadn't done before. Um, we'd carried the Super Bowl, uh, albeit not in exclusivity. Um, we carried uh, WWE events and we still do. Um, but there was a, there, this was, this was, you know, breaking new territory. And actually I've got, I've got a few Comcast approved stats for you, which Ooh, I'll come, come to great, in a second, yeah. just to show how much new territory we broke. Um, so from a, from a FinOps point of view, we knew this was going to drive up our usage. We knew that the platform was going to have to operate at a scale we hadn't seen before. And we knew that upfront, um, people wanted to know, you know, what, how much that was going to cost. That's really difficult when you've not, you know, that you're talking about something you haven't seen before. Um, we we basically went about it a couple of ways. First, first way we, we did basically a kind of top down approach. We just thought, okay, well, let's take a few assumptions. Let's like work on you know, how the kind of, you know, the delivery plan might look, the kind of scale we might see, go back to our actual data where we, we have seen, you know, data at different scale, different platform scales in the past. And let's you know uh, produce a, a top-down forecast, which actually in the end wasn't too far wrong. Um, what we then did is we we sought to then refine that forecast constantly. So um, the team we you know this is the beauty of having a team basically behind you. We basically Dave, Dave and I just sort of handed it to the team and said, figure this one out for us. And what they did is they <laughs> they 
built a model which was and what they effectively did was to take a baseline just to establish a baseline of before any activity took place and to be constantly assessing the impact of any work that was being done to support you know to support this event uh, and then extrapolating costs so what they were able to then do was just forecast that forward mm -hmm. so as we went along and as we got closer and closer to the game uh, we had more and more confidence about you know what we might see on, on the cross front and in the end it, it wasn't too far off um yeah but i mentioned i mentioned you know i mentioned those stats and and just to be clear for, from a from a company point of view this this was a, a huge success um and these are i honestly i i, I feel like i'm not actually reading these but these are these are these are honestly okay. these are genuine it was the most streamed event in u.s history um it drove the internet to the largest ever usage in a single day in the u.s and 30 percent of internet traffic was consumed during that game 30 percent of internet traffic it's it was no and this is where this is where our friend taylor comes in so we, as the game approached, and I'll go coming back to that sort of the way the, the, the season works, we knew that um, we knew that uh, in the, I think about a week before, we knew that the Kansas City Chiefs were going to play. And uh, for anyone who's not aware, uh, Kansas City Chiefs have a, have a player uh, called Travis Kels. Am I right? Yeah, there you go. The only player's name I know, by the way. Yeah, that probably, is it. Probably, yeah, yeah. Uh, and who I'm sure is an excellent player. Uh, sure. I think, uh, I've heard, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, exactly. Um, he, he also happens to be dating uh, Taylor Swift. Uh, and Taylor was uh, seen, I think, at a number of NFL events and NFL, NFL games during the season. And then obviously it came to the wild card game, which was a big game for, for, the, for the Chiefs uh, against the Dolphins, I think it was. Uh, and, uh, you know, <laughs> she was there. There was a lot of buzz around the game. Um, it was, I think there was something, there was an other, other interesting uh, fact was it was the fourth coldest game in NFL history. <laughs> and it was, it was properly cold that day. Oh, wow. Um, and yeah, and, and all this combination of things drove, like I say, those, those stats that I, I mentioned there, it dro drove so much interest and so many people to come to the, come to watch uh, that game exclusively on Peacock. Uh, and I would say one thing for our uh, our platform guys and everyone who basically delivered it, uh, it went off pretty much without a hitch, uh, pretty much entirely without a hitch. And to wow. do that at that scale, and uh, Dave, you, you remember how many that we had? So um, I think we ended up with 23 million concurrent streams at one time mm -hmm. so of the game. So, so yeah, the, it was it was huge scale. And yeah, my um, show's got a little bit to go to catch up to that number. <laughs> uh, it's going to happen, Steph. It's going to happen. <laughs> um, but I think that the interesting thing from a cost perspective was, um, as we uh, were ramping up, um, and you know, testing certain things and and testing whether the scale could handle it and that kind of thing, it actually helped us to prepare the the forecast going forward because we could see well if we hit this number if we hit that number what would it what would the cost be and we were able to extrapolate that out. Wow. Okay. All right. That's perfect. I mean, let me go to some things on the chat, but insane are those stats. I agree. Uh, special Joe, this is those numbers were incredible. Thank you so much for sharing them. Um, and so. The, yeah, let's bring it back to forecasting. But yeah, thank you. That was so interesting. The, and I love seeing the sometimes when we work in FinOps, we don't always see the end product. We just we just focus on that, like the, the Amazon console, and we don't necessarily see it go further. So it's great to see that kind of real world thing compared to like the, the cost. Um, so Sav asks, uh, what's your top tip for getting started with forecasting? That's a great question. <laughs> um, getting started with forecasting. So uh I, I, take, I take, take it back to again our, our story, and um, uh, back four or four years ago or so, when I was sort of tasked with looking into cloud efficiency, um, and you know then you know coming into that sort of space, um, forecasting obviously was one of the things that was you know first up. I mean it was you know yeah we we're, we're seeing bills rise. Are they going to keep rising? Um, so forecasting was one of the fir first things. So I mean there was a lot of Excel. Uh, to be fair, there's, there's still quite a bit of Excel. I mean, you know, it's a great tool, uh, but there was a lot of Excel, um, and I guess, you know, we've over time we've been able to develop that. So we've gone from a position where we actually had one forecast that we would put out, 
annually on a sort of mm -hmm. top-down basis. We've over time we've gone more granular. We, we're going down to sort of team and component level to build up a forecast rather than sort of doing it, you know, from the from the top. Um, We've increasing the frequency at which we forecast now. The team are doing a phenomenal job. Um, we're now in a position where we can for re forecast monthly, which really, really supports our finance partners really well. And obviously, that's you know, we work obviously with engineering really closely, yeah. but for us, finance are just, are just as important a partner. Um, and so for us to be able to support them in that way is great. Um, in terms of the, in terms of the tip, I, would, I guess I would say, uh, don't don't try and boil the ocean all at once don't yeah. don't try and you know go straight straight to run i don't think we could have got to where we are without the time and bringing in you know building the team build bringing in the expertise bringing people from different backgrounds that we brought into the team mm -hmm. and using using their skills so that would be i think you know just just start 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 simple and then build it up iterate, iterate over it yeah yeah, think, and, uh, my, my top oh, tip oh, is my top tip is um, go and talk to people. Go and talk to the engineers. They're the ones that are pressing the buttons. They're the ones who who will tell you what's coming down 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 the road with regards to new workloads or optimizations that we can get in. Yeah. And if yeah. you if you continually talk to them, the more frequently you talk, you'll you'll get a better forecast. I love these. They're great, great kind of tips. And uh, I'll just show you, okay, so there's a YouTube video. Don't forget to subscribe if you're on uh, on YouTube, but you can check out this forecasting video from reInvent last year that kind of goes through some of these things. But um, I'm just going to recap like some of what was said because I think it was really interesting and, and great advice. So some of the stuff you said earlier, Dave, was like, start with looking um, backwards and seeing what you've already spent money on. If you have situations like this already happening, use that as a baseline. Also have a guess. I think it's a great piece. Like you're first doing forecasting, just like sticking your finger in the air. You're going to be right. You're going to be wrong. At least you'll kind of know where to start. Like you were just talking about, Chris, starting at a big scale and then narrowing it down. So you could do a monthly forecast then turning it into maybe a weekly forecast and a daily forecast, whatever is relevant for your business. And kind of maybe if you have trends and flows over time, see how that's affecting it. And then, like you just said as well, speaking to the people who build stuff. There is, um, I know if you're doing a forecast and you're like, right, I've worked it out. We're on a steady up thing. And then suddenly your forecast either spikes or could drop. Your spend could spike or drop. Uh, and you notice in like what what the hell is happening and then you go and see to the engineers and they're like yeah, yeah yeah you know we just we just deployed a whole new architecture or yeah we just deprecated something you're like you're like oh no my forecast is wrong it's like well if you'd have actually asked the people what was going on you're more likely to get it right so make sure you go and speak to those developers okay we've also got a couple of questions in the chat let me throw this out um uh is there any influence wait i think that's into Inter influence example between SRE and FinOps streamline platform. Any any feedback on that? Um, inter influence. Um, so um, the way with, that we've built the team, I guess. Look, I could ask this question uh, this yeah. way. Uh, the, the way we built the team. So I I'm in the SRE engineering team, and Chris um, Chris is the the analyst arm. But we work um, hand in glove together. The way we see it is we've got lots of different stakeholders mm -hmm. and our job is to translate um, what the teams are saying. So Chris's team, they understand what the leadership are saying, what the finance team are saying, what our procurement team are saying. And it's our job to translate that into words that team leaders, managers, engineers can understand and, and action the information that we give them. So, um, so, so that's kind of, kind of how we, how we play. But we, we, we sit as one big team, really, um, just servicing two different um, sides of um, the different personas. Yeah, awesome. And uh, and one more shout out, uh, bravo for the whole streaming team to deliver that. I agree, that is amazing. Um, you work with some very smart engineers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shout Great out to those engineers. guys. <laughs> uh, and and following on from that question, uh, did AWS have to do the same exercise? to ensure they could meet the elastic needs for Sky. So uh, let's flip that round because I'm not sure what the Amazon side did, but did you do any big testing that you know of to make sure that the uh, developer teams could be yes. prepared for this kind of event? And and actually, um, we've got a really good partnership with AWS. Our, our account team are fantastic mm -hmm. um, and they really support us day, day in, day out. And it was no different for the NFL. So, so they were involved for, um, at, 
at the start of planning. You know, how, how could we get that scale? Um, how could we manage the costs? Um, but but they were there kind of every step of the way um, because it was it was a big thing. We were using a lot of resource. Um, mm -hmm. And and yeah, they gave us some great advice on both, um, you know, what we could do with with savings plans, mm -hmm. what we could do with our our eyes, um, not just to for cost purposes, but also just to make sure that the, the instances were going to be there. Right, we use a lot yeah. of spots, mm -hmm. so so we needed to make sure that it was there when we needed it. Um, so so yeah, and we we were testing for for a fair amount of time before the event. And, um, and yeah, it's something we regularly do because uh, mm -hmm. the, the people don't like it when uh, when sporting <laughs> events go wrong. Yeah, <laughs> yeah if, I can imagine that. Sport uh, means are very excitable. Yeah, and if I'm not wrong, um, they were here on the night as well. So yeah. for for us, that when the game was played, this it, it was basically the middle of the night in the UK. We yeah. had we had teams, obviously, as you can imagine, uh, on the you know on the event bridge. Uh, actually, you know, people came into the office as well, which was which was ah. quite nice. Um, well, it was it was apart from for those who actually had to do it. Uh, but, <laughs> uh, but but you know, the Amazon team were there, the AWS team were there, um, supporting us actually on the night as well. So um, yeah, and actually, you know, Dave's point about things like the advice on savings plans actually ties back to your forecasting point, Steph. You know, mm. if you, you know, when you're managing savings plans and and commitments as we are as, as the central FinOps team. Um, the you know having that knowledge of you know uh, people are the people at AWS, but also having the having spoken to the teams and understanding what what is coming up, you mm -hmm. have to have that in order to be able to you know determine your savings plan strategy. Yeah, definitely, awesome. So uh, if you've been joining us uh, in and want to recap what we're talking about, we've got these guys from Sky who live and breathe doing FinOps in their world of work. And so we're getting some tips and advice from them. Uh, just going to segue into a little bit more of looking at the forecast. So this is something I, I want to just ask. Uh, when you were doing your, um, as you know, change of profession, not about forecasting. When you were doing your spend for the kind of hike in resources for the NFL or for any other kind of streaming events you're doing. Do you use any kind of unit cost to make sure that you're being efficient with your workloads? Yes. So, um, so we we look at um, cost per um, subscribers, obviously. Right. How much? How much it costs for somebody to sign in, and and you know if we're working really efficient efficiently that unit economic shouldn't change no matter what scale we're at mm -hmm. we live in the real world we know it will will absolutely <laughs> change um but but yeah so so we we look at look at those two things but also there are other indicators that we've started to to bring in we're bringing in um uh, as part of overall observability we're bringing in metrics from around the business so we can do um you know um uh, a technical metric so for our observability you know how much does it cost to store a log um how much how much does it cost to to um to store our our content and and really deep diving in into that and seeing whether the unit economic over time whether we can drive that down um in yeah. fact we've we've got to the point where we're just we've just launch our gamification um which i'm calling fantasy finops league um, oh yeah all right but, we're gonna come back to fin fantasy finops league we'll stick it yeah stick around in the episode to hear the rest about that yeah. i was jumping ahead i was jumping ahead okay let's let's close off on a little bit last bit about forecasting because i know you guys are using some tools to do this so what kind of tools are you using to enable you to be so accurate in your forecasting and any advice you want to share around that well, um, we've got, um, you know, again, I'll come back. I'm always going to mention Excel. Uh, that That's not going away. There's, there's still... You know, Shout still, out, Excel. Absolutely. It's, it's still very much there. Um, but, you know, we, we've given the team, you know, absolutely, you know, very much the opportunity to you know, go and identify a solution for this. Um, one of the things that they, yeah, frankly, they came to us and said, this is, this is where we need to go with this, was to actually start... Um, Having, having our own FinOps data uh, repository. So a place where they could actually bring the billing data in and start to align it with some of the other metrics that Dave mentioned, 
uh, and then they can actually start to use that as their the basis for their forecasting. So they, they've got all the data in there and they can build their forecasting on top of that. So, I mean, it's, in terms of sort of visualizations, uh, you know, we, we'd maybe uh, put something in Tableau, that kind of thing, or, uh, you know, one of the sort of, you know, the usual sort of uh, BI tools that, that people have around. Um, but yeah, for, from, from that point of view, we, you know, in, it's all about, you know, the, getting the data in the right place and then just getting, I know we we actually got, um, one of our team is um, pretty much uh, a bit a bit into the older uh, data science stuff. Uh, and he's he's done some really, really cool stuff uh, working in um, working with Python to uh, actually sort of, you know, do all this in, you know, in, in code. So, um, yeah, I, I'm just, <laughs> I'll pick up Tony uh, for, for that. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, and uh, but yeah, so it's kind of you know it's all being done you know within the team and you know, using whatever whatever tools they can get their hands on. We do have um, we do use uh, Cloudability to to mm -hmm. share some of our um, cost data. It allows us to dashboard um, very very easily and, and that kind of thing. Um, but what we found is the off the shelf tools doesn't allow us to to put the business context that, that we're mm -hmm. gathering so as we go and talk to all the different engineering teams we can't do everything in cloudability so that's why we've we've got our own data lake and yeah. one of the things that we put in there after we've talked to the engineers is oh let's log there's a new workload coming down mm -hmm. we think around the, the 18th and right. how much that is going to cost so that's coming into that will push our costs up and then also what optimizations the team's doing you know are yeah. we we're, we're going to um change our retention policy on our on our f3 bucket on on the 18th so that helps us as feeding that into the data lake helps us be much more accurate with what perfect yeah the, the relationship you guys have with the rest of your departments your engineering your finance is amazing and i really encourage anybody watching who is in a FinOps team small or big to develop those relationships because like we've said it will really improve kind of how you develop your work and how well you optimize and also shout out to data lakes like when i was a customer I made my own data lake they are everyone always asks me like oh i need to do like per per subscriber whatever it is per unit how do i do it i'm like get the data once you have the data together it's just division so it's just making sure that you can and you can do that in excel we can do it we can chris loves excel so we can, we can do that in there um okay so just as a couple of i was giving bits like as well if you have any follow-up questions or want to learn any more then please feel free to email us at cost at amazon.com uh and uh, any other questions you could keep us going but let's do a poll let's let's break it up a little bit let's uh let's go for a poll so let me share my screen so before we do the poll Chris, we are both speaking at the FinOps Summit. I keep saying the wrong name. We had this conversation before. Uh, where's the link? I keep saying it. But um, what, uh, here it is, the event, the London Member Summit. God, well, I don't know why that won't stick in my head. We are both speaking at the London Member Summit, which is very exciting, which is in April. Do you want to do a quick pitch for what you're talking about? Yeah, I'm absolutely happy to, uh, Steph. Um, we are um, I'm actually uh, with another colleague of mine, Leela. Uh, we're going to be facilitating a uh, chalk talk on forecasting, uh, which hopefully will be a lot of fun. We are hoping to get some uh, great contributions from um, FinOps Foundation members who will be there. Um, and just, yeah, I mean, we, we can share, obviously, our experience, um, but we really totally want to hear how other people have gone about it. Uh, and maybe, you know, you know sort of just thrash around thrash through a few uh, a few topics on that front um a few a few of our team are going to be attending um but uh, i will be barring them from the room because they've heard enough from me and i believe <laughs> seth you're on as well and so i should be sending them to you yeah yeah do uh, i'm doing one about waste uh the three watts of waste gotta love some alliteration uh so the idea being kind of figuring out what waste actually means what counts as waste uh what do we do and what what, what tools can we use to find it so that you guys can kind of lower that because that was one of the things high on the finops uh state of Philips survey that we covered a couple of episodes so we want to we want to help you guys so we're focusing on that which leads me to my first poll question today i'm going to be brutal are you going to go to the waste talk? Or are you going to go to the forecasting talk? Put one in the chat for waste, one in the chat for forecasting. Uh, I want to check some numbers. Who's coming to see our different talk? I threw this in there to be like, this is a bit mean, but we'll see. Vote for the forecasting one because it's good. I spelled forecasting wrong. I've just realized. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm dyslexic. It's, it's like one word I can't spell. Like I, I did it at reInvent and I, every so often my partner at the event would be like, Steph, you spelled forecasting wrong. And I'd be like, oh no. Um, Wait, well, he's got some more forecasting. Someone's put 1.5. I love it. They're like, I want to do both. You can you can go for both. I'm sure you could oh. pop your head in. Just warn me if you're going to leave halfway through. Uh, uh, I just want to know. Just want to know. Uh, forecasting waste. Oh, oh cloud, nice. cloud. cloud Asher is ready. Um, I love that. Uh, awesome. Okay. So let's get into the, the second part of today's talk. With Sky, you guys are great at doing your FinOps team. You're a big FinOps team. You're well established. But one thing that you wanted to share as well was getting data in front of engineers. We've touched upon in the full episode the data lake and forecasting. But talk us through some of the stuff that you have done. Maybe we could start off with kind of cost allocations so people know how much they're actually spending in the cloud. Yeah, so um, so we, we've got a logic for cost allocation that takes in takes in many many facets so you know things like um the the account name that's that's something you could could take in that helps with allocation tagging is obviously an obvious one easily said hard to get everyone to be a hundred percent on tagging as as uh, i'm sure some of you as will know um but then then there are other things factors that that we um bring in as well so we look at um, when we talk to the different teams, maybe they're using one account to serve two or three different things. So how do we allocate in that instance? Maybe one resource is supporting two different things. So, you know, is it a 50-50? Is it mm -hmm. something else? Um, so, so again, it comes back to that talking to teams and building that your internal business logic and then mapping that over over your cost um so we we've we've got quite mature on on doing that and where we want to get to is taking metrics from our observability engineers and using that to to say well we've got one resource seven two things where is the traffic going and maybe that 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 gives us a nice split is that 60 40 is it 80 20 to those two different things we're supporting so so that's where we're going but we've developed a um a capability that we called finbot um finbots are in-house um tool to um to put cost data in front of engineers i was going to say nagbot but it is it's, it's, a, it's a bit of Poor, the, the poor bot is throwing poor. them under the <laughs> under the rails but, just because they a lot of our engineers uh, <laughs> a lot of our engineers um you slap and trying to get engineers to go to other tools to look at stuff is difficult so we want to be where they are so what what finbot does is it provides um anomaly detection alerting um it provides uh, weekly monthly reporting um and we're, we're also increasingly using it to push potential optimizations out to teams but targeted so so we're not just going to say take everything out of the the aws console you could right size this we're going to go and talk to them and say is this the right thing and then we're going to use finbot to push that out and then track the cost over time as well so that's that's one of the pretty cool capabilities we did and we yeah. want to go further and put our cost data um, next to their operational metrics and alerting. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we we actually did find a um, an issue about a year ago, not through the system being down, not through um, somebody looking, but because we saw a big spike in cost and that pointed to an underlying issue um that, that the team went and fixed yep. so we're in, it's increasingly being used in in that way to solve operational issues wow and i love that like exactly the thing that we say a lot of the time here is developers don't want to go out of their way to go look at something else like put it in front of them put it in their channels i totally agree with makes it a little bit easier because you don't want to have to run around and look at different tools like it's it's really annoying to do that so putting it right in front of them have you done anything to work out like how people engage with the things that come up in Slack, like reactions or comments or anything like that? Do you track any of those kind of things? Um, we we ha we've made the uh, Finbot now a response tool as well. So okay. so when people go in, there's an anomaly. 
they can send the response from Slack straight back into our data lake. So, so we get the context kind of instantly, which is pretty cool. Oh, wow. um, we do look at who uses our tools so we, so we can see um, see who's who's logging into to cloudability, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but again, um, I, I don't want to jump ahead, but we want to gamify that as well. Um, yeah, we'll get onto yeah. the gamification for, for sure. And I've just put in the chat about how you can integrate cross normal action with chatbots nice. so uh you can people at home can try that out i think it's great and there is a blog coming out soon ish i hope that's coming out about how to integrate uh there's two blogs coming out, actually i'm gonna shout these out for the future uh one is about um cost news going straight into slack so that people can see any of the new announcements kind of like cost news digest we use that as a base for all of our data so any announcements on cost can go straight into the platform and then we also have one coming out which is pulling uh, trusted advisor and cost optimization hub data and putting it into Jira. So there's a couple of things coming out soon. So uh, we'll make sure to highlight those. But yeah, Chris, anything else on the the bot? Any any fun anecdotes or uh, has anybody found anything like? Has there been an anomaly that was like caught by using it or any fun stories like that? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, you know, there was one. Uh, I say Dave mentioned. You know, Finbot has has caught anomalies. What what we do now is. Um, Every anomaly alert that Finbot sends out mm -hmm. goes not just to the uh, team that has, you know, where the, where the cost is allocated, but also comes to our team as well. So we will review those first thing in the morning uh, mm -hmm. and go through, you know, just one by one, have a look, see, you know, what's the what's the anomaly alert? Is it, you know, sometimes obviously if it if it's just a repeat of an alert from the previous day, we'll, we'll probably, you know, just assume that that's already been looked at. But yeah. it's a, you know it is a great way to catch them and and you know it has I think I feel like you know in some ways we had more of these things in the past before we introduced Finbot so we had right. more things like oh someone accidentally left a tap running uh, over a weekend uh, and we came in on Monday morning and found the place was flooded but now with you know with Finbot's help I feel like we catch those so early now that uh, the uh, the water damage is minimal. Oh, I love the analogy. Although I've just that. remembered the, the story my mum always tells me, such a sidebar, that when I was a kid, two Mother's Days in a row, I somehow flooded the bathroom by like trying to wash something. It's like, <laughs> um, I think I was trying to give a like clean a fish tank or something. I don't know. I was just like two <laughs> random things and I just left the tap running. And it was like, why two Mother's Day in a row did this happen? So sorry, mum. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> let's let's go into the gamification stuff, Dave, that you teased uh, in the last kind of 10 minutes. Uh, share with us the stuff that you were doing, because this sounds really fun. You guys, we've already said a lot today. You're already doing great forecasting. You've already got great relationships with different teams, stakeholders. You're putting data in front of engineers. But to really encourage that cost culture, you're doing some fun gamification. So lay it on us. What are you guys doing? So, um, so it, it, it's all based on unit economics. So we've we've got from um, all of the teams their technical metric, and we're doing a cost per something. So, so is it a cost per log, or is it a cost per secret stored, or is it a cost per um, a cost per um, content stored in in an S3 bucket? And then what we do is we baseline that over a 30 day period and then we see if it's got better or worse over the next 30 days. So then that gives us a, um, a, a, a percentage of efficiency, whether it's whether you're trending up or whether you're trending down. So really, you're playing against yourself. But what that does is it helps normalize, um, gives us a normalized um, uh, efficiency rating that we because we've got lots of teams but they all do different things so so we can we can have that normalized efficiency metric for for each of the teams and then we put them in a league table and um they can see you can fight it out to be the most efficient team within the within global streaming so it's been go it's been going it, it took a while to to get there again lots of talking yeah. 20 years but um but yeah we've we've got the majority of teams on there now and uh, we want to take it further so, so you know how how many people have interacted with finbot there you go um how many people have logged into the tool mm -hmm. um you know biggest optimizer you know mm -hmm. I, I think um a lot of what we do is is trying to get people involved in 
in FinOps and mm -hmm. recognition is a really, really important part of that. Um, when people do some great work, we need to we need to hold them up and say, look, this was great. And then that means that other t other teams can can do that as well. So so, yeah. And I've got some interesting uh, feedback from some of the engineers. Some want to help other teams be more efficient. Some just want to win. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so it's 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 quite quite um, a good thing. Is it in its early stages, but we're already seeing a, a bit of in, engagement. In. I love that. That is everybody knows who's from my team. Uh, I would be the one who just wants to win. <laughs> yeah, I, I have a slight reputation for being a bit competitive, which I love. Nobody come for me. I love being competitive. It makes me a good athlete. Um, and uh, and so that's that. I would definitely be on that. And I love that you're not just doing saving. Oh, I love that. <laughs> oh, has it gone? That's just, uh, where's it gone? Slap does winning. I do, because I'm good at it. Showcase the trophies that are behind me. Uh, <laughs> um, that you're not just including optimization, but also utilizing stuff so like you said it like using the fin bar going on the tour and we're always talking about here like getting more people to utilize the things and getting it to be like a source of habit and so even if they're doing it to win and they're going in the tour every day to make sure it counts to win like they'll start to notice something uh and it will be kind of really cool uh chris have you seen anybody do any big anything that people have done that really impacted their score when it came to optimization any kind of moving to anything or or any optimization strategies that, that made a big impact yeah i mean there's been a number of initiatives and and teams are you know david's right team teams are competitive and, and this is why the gamification is so important um yeah you know we've we've done bits in the past where we've just done a kind of simple tagging uh, coverage league table mm -hmm. uh, so which is you know what what percentage of your taggable resources have you actually tagged? And that was uh, that was phenomenal in actually getting people. I have people. Wow. Go, why are we not first? Why why are we second? I'm like, well, yeah. so, someone else has done it better than you in the last month. So, so it does it does work. So, from that point of view, um, we've had a you know a number of uh, things that we've done over the last year. I think one of the big ones has probably been around uh, Graviton. Uh, I would say. Um, Dave probably knows more about it than me, so I, I, I'm going to let him. I'm going to let him talk about. It. Yeah. So, so, um, so the teams who have adopted the newer technologies and, and kept up. You know, we talk about uh, EBS volumes going from GP2 to GP3, so saves saves you money. Um, but but the big thing for um, the teams that have saved the most and gone up the leaderboard is switching to Graviton. You okay. can't do it in every use case, mm. but certainly looking at what compute you're using and m making sure that your utilization is correct. Um, but also, if you if you can use a, um, a cheaper processor for the same um, for the same performance, why would you not use it? Is, exactly. is, yeah. So so yeah. So um, a few of our teams have have gone on that journey, mm. and and that really makes a big That's dent. Amazing. That's uh, though I love hearing people using Graviton is always is always a success story for me. Okay, we'll do a fun uh, a fun little poll because you know I love a poll. Do you play fantasy football? Do people play fantasy football still? One for yes, two for no. Like, is people? I'm a like no. I don't think I've ever played. Um, and I or that's a lie. I did once when I was in my placement year. I've just remembered, and I think I was like I did the auto version of it where you just like it just gives you football players, and then I won. I think no, I didn't win. I was winning for ages, and I was like hands off. Like I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, people, I mean, okay, some, one person, or oh, a couple people are, but most people aren't, so it makes you feel more vindicated. Oh, more people are. Okay, good to know. Rahini's doing it. Oh, hey, Rahini. Uh, she's a fantasy football player. I love it. I love it. Uh, good to know people are still using it, that they still enjoy that. Okay, we've got a couple more minutes before we do our Richard summary. So my last question for you guys really is, what are you doing next? Like, what's the big thing you're focusing on? Uh, Dave, kick us off. Yeah, what are you looking forward to focusing so on next? So, um, as with all success stories, we're um, blessed with more work to do. So, um, <laughs> just announced uh, this week that there will be a second NFL um, exclusive game uh, show Ooh. on Peacock. Um, it's in. Um, it's going to be in Brazil. It's the first mm -hmm. regular season game in South America, um, and it's going to be the first game of the season on a on a Friday night for about fifty years. Yeah. 
So wow. um, all we know is that the Philadelphia Eagles are going to be the home team. We don't know who they're playing yet. So, um, so yeah, City, so this is where the forecast will come back into play. Put Taylor back on. Stop yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> You're just like, well, I was going to do another poll that was like, are you a Swifty? And then Chris is like, yes. Nah. It, it's a, it's a, it, it's actually a really good opportunity for us. This, you know, obviously as a, as a, as a company and for for the Peacock, um, for the Peacock brand, but for us personally as well, being involved with you know the the, the previous um, uh, wildcard game, and having yeah. all of that data from that, uh, when we were asked again you know right we looks like we're going to be doing the nfl brazil game you know what what are we talking in terms of projected cloud costs we basically mm -hmm. turn to those actuals i've got the team on it you know again forecasting based on you know the information we work with again the, the test team uh we spoke with finance obviously we spoke with um, you know the sort of the principal engineers uh and aws helped as aws well. helped as well absolutely big time um and we we were able to go to the cto um, and at, at his request, and uh, and present you know the the what our projections were at at different you know for for different levels of um of, of you know of customer usage basically you know. mm -hmm. and I think it was great because it actually allowed us to have a have a voice at that level and saying well actually you know based on you know based on what we have seen in the past if we go at this level this is your cost impact. If you go at this level, here's your cost impact, and just to give give people you know who are making the, the big decisions the all the information they needed uh, to mm -hmm. make those decisions about you know go no go. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean that was that was fantastic for us, um, and yeah, it's obviously it's a go. So we're 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 ready to go again. That's amazing. Um, I'm just going to throw one more question in from the audience, which was, um, uh, do product teams carry goals around optimization in terms of your company? So are people in your organization, are they being measured on the, the, how well they're optimizing? Um, actually, no, but we have, okay. um, we know, knew that that was a gap in our, in our capability. So, um, so yeah, we've, we've, We've been working with the product teams to look at that level. So we've done engineering, we've done leadership, but it's that bit in the middle. And the product teams and the project managers, mm -hmm. they're the ones that really know what is coming down down the pipe. And can we insert our optimization into the team roadmap? So, so very early, early days on that, but, but yeah, we've identified that as a gap and I, I think it's probably something if anyone's got any good ideas, we're happy to learn. And, uh, and I, and I sort of, I can totally empathize with the point there about um, teams, you know, being asked to deliver things and are struggling to find time for cost optimization. And we're, you know, it's, we understand that completely. And it's always, you know, when we're approaching and trying to drive these things, you have to be mindful of that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It is. And that is why I think a lot of what you guys are talking about is working so well that you are putting, you're not making it a really hard extra step for builders. You're putting it in front of them, you're giving them advice and trying to get integrated with the way that they're building so that it becomes part of the norm. It's not a piece of extra work. Like it should not be, security is not an extra piece of work that you do. Uh, being highly available is not an extra piece of work. It's part of the normal build. And so I think that's become more common and more general than it is but you still have companies that are trying to that are being successful which is great and trying to get stuff out the door quickly but uh, we want to make sure that they're set up for success in in terms of optimizing um one, one more question is there fantasy football for soccer yes there is <laughs> <laughs> you didn't in, i don't do you know i don't know where it came from i don't know if fantasy football came from america or england i'm not really sure uh on the last bit right Thank you so much, guys. Um, we'll hand over to Richard to do uh, Secret Richard to do his summary of the event. So, Richard, whenever you are ready to go, uh, then please feel free to share your screen. But Dave and Chris, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, this has been a great chat. I've learned so many things, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys at future events. So. Let's do our summary. Uh, when it comes to forecasting, engineering and finance should be hand in hand, just like Taylor and Travis. Oh, really much love. Uh, <laughs> leverage AWS support. They know this stuff all too well. Nice Taylor joke there. Uh, <laughs> and don't let cost awareness be a blank space. <laughs> Develop a strategy that works for you and make it fun. Loving the Taylor Swift references through that. Amazing. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you all for watching. 
thanks all. Uh, I think we've had a great episode. Um, as always, we'll be back next week with instant scheduler and more optimization EC2 stories. Thank you to my lovely guest, Dave and Chris. And we will share this episode on YouTube, Spotify, and all the normal places. But we will see you next time. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye.